I've had several people ask me about the same problem, so I thought that I would post a video on how to work this problem. And I thought it would be helpful to show all of this step by step. So if you read this problem right here, this is the aerogel problem. It's super cool aerogel. But if you glance through the whole problem, besides there being a year in there, there's only one number. It says 30 milligrams per cc. And you kind of have to read the question carefully, and it, it's telling you what it wants. It wants pounds in a cubic foot. So all these problems, make sure you know where you're going. So a pound, and cubic foot is where you write FT with a cube. That's where you're going, and the only number you have to start with is this 3.0 milligrams. in one cc. Now, before we get going too crazy on this, it's, you're gonna have to allow a lot of room. There's a little bit of information you need to be aware of. The first is right over here. I wrote this over here. A cc has been seen in syringes, if you've done anything in the medical field, or like if you ever have to dose small children with those little cups. One side will say milliliter and one side will say cc. So you should be aware and you should just memorize that a cc is a milliliter. If you turn it round and round on the cups, you, you can see the lines match up. Cc also stands for cubic centimeter. That's what that front C is about. This is in a relationship we expect you to know and remember. The reason I'm bringing it up, of course, is because I am seeing a cc on the bottom. Second piece of information. This one is talking about a foot. And there's one thing that a lot of people do recognize is they somehow know how to get from a centimeter to an inch. I don't know, a lot of people just happen to know this one, that it's 2.54 centimeters in an inch. This problem says something about feet. So you might intuitively be like, well, if I can get to a centimeter, because I have a centimeter here, if I can get to a centimeter, and then I can make it an inch. That's how I can head towards a foot. So here's this other information about feet. We're going to deal with the cubic issue in a minute. And then if you don't know, let's say you don't know, you know there's some kind of relationship. Let's say you have no idea how many pounds are in a kilogram. You do have the internet right there in front of you. Um, in our notes, we and in the book, there are little charts. So you can use stuff like that also. But if you miss the chart, you can just Google and you can be like, you know, I need to know how a pound is related to a kilogram. And you're going to get that relationship right there. And the reason I had that in my head is because I knew that it was asking about pounds, but it was starting with milligrams. So I just needed a pound related to something. And then some of the information that I gave it, like it's on the same page in my section as the uh, metrics chart I had recommended. It's on that same page. It's just a little lower. That's the relationship that I gave. Note that we have a milligram, so we'll also have to make sure that we take the milligram. We're gonna have to somehow get it to a gram, and then we'll have to do a gram to a kilogram. So eventually we can get to this unit and to pounds. So let's get going. We're gonna put all the units in place first. So milligram, I'm gonna deal with the top units first, and then we'll go back and deal with that CC unit. So diagonally down, don't think, just immediately put it down diagonally. So milligram. And anytime you have a prefix like that, mo you likely will be taking it to the base unit, to a gram. Do it again. Immediately throw the G down. Don't think about it. Now, if we kind of think we've already used this one, but we haven't used this idea of taking a gram to a kilogram. Immediately throw the KG down. Now we're going to get it to a pound. Now look, let's watch these units cancel. So milligrams cancels with milligrams. Grams cancels with grams. Kilograms cancels with kilograms. So we are left with the unit that we want, pounds, pounds. Now we got to deal with the CC situation. So the CC is going to go diagonally up, just like these went diagonally down each time. CCs, to get rid of it, we need a top CC. So we're going to be going upwards now for all of these guys because you need a unit on top and a unit on bottom to get rid of units. So CC is going to go up here. 
And in this case, it's wanting us to head towards a foot. And we so we want to go towards a centimeter so we can get to an inch so we can get to a foot. So we're going to rewrite this as centimeters cubed. Throw the unit up without thinking. Now we know we can get from centimeters to an inch. Throw the unit up, inch to a foot. Now I'm keeping these cubes for a reason. If I had just put centimeter and centimeter, I would only have been able to get rid of one of these three units. That would have still been a squared unit and it would look like a mess. You need the units to be cubed. I'm gonna show you how to put the numbers in so that you get this relationship. It's still this relationship. You're gonna do something to the relationship to make it a cube unit. Just as a note, CC, CC cancels. CM, CM cancels. IN, IN cancels. Now, we're just gonna fill in numbers. It depends on how you like to do this. If you like to say a thousand milligrams in one gram, totally fine, will totally work. And then you can do a thousand here into this. If you're using the chart and you're strictly using the chart values that are in top hat, the way you're gonna do it is you put a one by the unit that has a prefix and then you fill in whatever the chart value has for it. So in this case, this is 10 to the minus three and then this is 10 to the three. You'll notice 10 to the minus three on top is kind of like putting it on bottom. That's The numbers will work out the same every single time. So don't worry about that. And then we're gonna put in that information we had from the internet, or if you looked on some of the common English units. There you go. So now we've used him. Now we're gonna use this relationship. It's one CC to one CM because they mean the same thing. Then we're going to say 2.54 in one inch. Now, again, units are cubed. We need to cube this and cube this. Yes, one times one times one is still one, but just for the good practice of it, we're going to go ahead and show that it's being cubed. We've used this one. We do the same thing for the next one. Now, when you put this in your calculator, It's going to look like, if you're gonna use the second key and you might wanna get used to it, you need to have a one times in the middle because the second key covers, the, the EE key covers this. The 10, it includes the 10. So I am going to use the EE keys if people are used to it. There's advantages to using it coming up later on in class. So there's one E and I have to use the negative button, not the minus button, three. I go across the top first is how I do these times 2.2046 times 2.54 raised to the three times 12 raised to the three divided by one e to the three. When I do it like this, I don't have to put princes around it when I use that e. If I'd had multiple things on the bottom, I don't know, let's, I know I've got ones on the bottom, but let's say that that one mattered. So one times one time, you know, I have all those ones across the bottom, one e to the three. Three. You need the bottom section in parentheses if you're going to write them as multiplication or the bottom section needs a division sign every single time like this if you don't want to use it parentheses. I'm trying to get to go over more. Yeah. Just pull a little bit more. I gotta put my 12. Okay, so if you don't feel like dealing with princes on the bottom, you need to do divided by one e to the 
three, and then anything else that's on the bottom, divided by one, divided by one, divided by one. Again, you don't need to put ones in. I'm just trying to remind everyone how to use their calculator and deal with numbers on the bottom of these factor label things. Regardless, in either way, you get this number right here. To get the sig figs right, it does say two sig figs. The reason it says that is because this counts as one, two sig figs. We don't count ones when we're doing stuff and we don't count any conversions within the metric chart towards anything. This one wouldn't matter, but it's got tons of sig figs. This one's got three, which is still more, and this has two, which is still more. I mean, which is equal to what we've got. So this gives me two sig figs, one, two, but that's not my answer because I need to look one space over. Notice that my seven rounds up. So it's 0 0.19 is the correct answer. Hope that helps. Don't forget your unit, pounds per feet cubed.